So for a three field breast treatment, you're going to have two tangents and a supraclavicular. Normally the supraclavicular is either with the gantry and an anterior, zero, or 1A depending on how your gantry is set up, or it can be 15 degrees off. We're going to do 15 degrees off just for the heck of it. 15 degrees off. As we discussed in class, we talked about diverging fields at the lateral aspect in the last video. You've also got a divergent field from the anterior. If the doctor is worried about the medial part of the field diverging and getting a little too deep in tissue and possibly getting close to the spinal cord, you rotate the gantry over. So you go from having a diverging beam to a flatter beam. So 15 degrees off will flatten this medial edge out so that it's coming down at a straight angle instead of a diverging angle. Either way works. It depends on what your doctor's training entailed in the first place. So what we have here, we still have drawn the superior edge of the medial tangent from our last video. We have the jaw closed down to zero for the Y1. Now, that creates also a non-diverging field on the inferior edge. So you've got a flat angle of divergence coming down here. It's completely flat. There is no divergence this direction. The reason we do that is we don't want to diverge into the underside of that tangent field. It would diverge like this. So when we close the jaw down, it becomes completely flat. We've also got the divergence from that tangent field to deal with too. As you can see here, we have our dotted line where the medial tangent superior edge would have been had we done nothing. You have a diverging line coming in this way. So if we were to treat right now, you would have a hot spot right in here. You don't want that. In order to get rid of the hot spot, what you have to do is actually kick the table. So we've turned the gantry to decrease divergence on the medial edge. We have closed the jaw down and created a non-diverging beam at the inferior edge. So our third area of divergence we have to deal with is from the contributing factor of the superior edge of the medial tangent. We will kick the table, we will kick the feet, toward, basically toward the gantry, rotating that table then flattens out the superior edge of that tangential field. You can see that I did not draw perfectly. What I never ever want to see or hear any of you do is try to draw a line that's solid across there. Drawing dashes or dots is the most accurate and careful way you can do it. And you can see there's just a hair bit of difference even with my very careful dashes. What I don't want to see is the following. Excuse me. Do not ever try to draw your match line like this. Okay? Which part of that line are you gonna go to? Well, it's easy to draw a straighter line on Pixie because she's hard. Most women are not. As soon as you make contact with the skin surface on most people, the skin actually buckles a little bit under the pressure of your pen. So it's really difficult to actually follow a straight line. It may look straight until you let the pressure off of your pen, and then it'll be wiggly, just like I just drew. So if you can make dots or very small dashes for your match lines, and you're going to be able to more accurately represent exactly where that field was. Showing this on the whiteboard was actually quite difficult. Actually demonstrating it is a little easier. So, again, we're dealing with three kinds of divergence here. We're getting rid of, rid of divergence on the inferior edge of the anterior by closing down the jaw. We're getting rid of the divergence from the medial aspect of this field by moving the gantry over. We get rid of the last divergence, which is contributed from the superior edge of the medial tangent, and the lateral tangent, by the way, by kicking the table. Now, having done that, 
we have to, when we, I'm showing it to you backwards in order to demonstrate this more fully. Generally what you're going to have when you actually treat one of these is something very different. You're going to have the tables at zero for your super flat. And I'm going to put a new match line on. And we're going to do this in the order that you would normally treat it. So, let's say you've set up your gantry and everything to treat this supraclavicular area. Right before you leave the room, you're going to go ahead and draw your match line. You're set. You do the treatment. Now we're going to come back in the room and set up for our medial tangent field. For the sake of argument, we're going to say that we do, we've already done our three point setup, we just now have to move to our appropriate marks. I'm going to achieve that, it's going to be very similar to what we talked about before, it's essentially there. Now, you rotate your gantry over to your appropriate tangential angle, and then you set your field size doing this manually so we can just demonstrate.